It's Chippy here from ultrabooknews.com and uh, in this video I want to quickly talk about Windows 8 and some of the things that we're going to be expecting in October 2012 when Win 8 launches. And I also want to show you some apps that I've been involved with as part of the judging of the Ultimate Coder Ultrabook Challenge. So there were some really cool apps coming out of that. Um, and that really does fold back into what's going to happen with Windows 8. So this um, uh, this idea of um, new hardware, new operating system and new software could be quite interesting for the development of the Ultrabook come Q4 2012. So let's just uh, take a look at where we are now. We are in October, the beginning of October 2012 and we've just been through three months of Ultrabooks with a new processing platform. Ivy Bridge has been in the devices now for about three months. Most of the um, 2012 up uh, devices have been updated but what's happened is that it seems to be the market has gone into pause state people are holding back on buying uh, because they know Windows 8 is coming they also know that prices are dropping on ultrabooks and they may be holding out I my personal experience through the website um, and through our affiliate links is that we saw some sales in July um, which flattened in August and actually tailed off in September a little bit as well so in terms of um, the market movement in Ultrabooks, um, I can reflect some of the sentiment that's out there already in, the, in, in, in people saying, and in, in market research, people saying that uh, sales numbers are going to be fairly low. Um, the uh, thing we've got to look forward to, though, of course, is, is, is Windows 8. So when we think about Windows 8, um, we're thinking about not just a new operating system because the Ultrabook devices are going to be refreshed to take advantage of some of the features of Windows 8. Of course, touch is a really big theme in Windows 8. The Metro or modern UI that comes with that um, brings a totally different feel to Windows 8. It uh, is going to reach out to the consumer in a way that uh, Windows has never done before. Um, and it's also going to be very interesting for developers as well because that Metro or modern user interface comes with the uh, Win8 uh, store um, and that of course becomes very interesting as Windows 8 devices roll out in their millions, in their tens of millions. So we're expecting about 20% of devices to convert from 7 to 8 or at least upgrade to Windows 8 during 2013 and there are a billion Windows devices out there. So we could be talking about 100 to 200 million devices getting Windows 8. Now that doesn't mean they're all going to be touchscreen uh, and Ultrabook like of course um, those sales numbers will depend on what happens in October. So when you think about um, this new platform we've got Ivy Bridge, you think about some of the lessons that have been learned over the last 12 months and you think about where the Ultrabook is actually going to. In fact, it's actually not going to any particular place. It's actually stretching out across the market in many different directions. In terms of um, going up in the market to meet business users uh, for the first time, so the VPro Ultrabook's coming out now, Fing features such as fingerprint uh, readers and the extra security that's going in there as well, uh, brings the range right up to into business level. But we've also seen prices drop and we've also seen the consumer uh, level being met um, a lot more than it was before. We were talking about premium devices before, $1,000, but it's clear now that in Q4 we're going to see 599 uh, as the entry level for Ultrabooks. There are plenty of 599 offers out there already, $599, uh, and that is 60% uh, yeah, of the uh, price that we had just six to eight months ago. So the whole range, the dynamic range of Ultrabooks is spreading out to meet uh, a number of different markets. So when we think about that whole range of new markets, we think about the new platform, let's also think about the redesign of the Ultrabook that comes with Windows 8. So touchscreens, obviously a big theme, um, different types of design, so modular, convertible and hybrid designs that will attract uh, different types of users. So we're getting the very much the personal, personal computer now. Um, we also have the idea of sensors as well, so Intel is offering sensor packs to manufacturers, designers, which would include things like GPS, accelerometer, gyroscope, uh, e-compass, 
uh, and even NFC as well is one of the options. Uh, so we'll see some old trucks come up with those. So that adds up to the next interesting thing, which is what the developers will do with that. I want to show you in a minute a couple of apps that I've been working with uh, from developers as part of the uh, Intel Ultimate Coder Ultimate Challenge competition which finished uh, just this week and also show you uh, a couple of other apps and talk about a few um, app ideas. So in summary um, there are three big changes that are going to happen. The hardware is going to change, the operating system is going to change and the applications are going to be refreshed on the platform as well. So those applications that really reach to the Ultrabook user and, and, and offer touch optimization, uh, use of sensors uh, and, and, and use of NFC as well could be very, very interesting. Uh, in addition to those three sort of changes that are happening, the prices will go down and reach a new um, price point as well. So 599 this makes it completely uh, interesting for users, especially those that have spent the last four months waiting to, up to upgrade their laptop. So, I although I don't think we'll reach the 40% of laptop sales um, as Ultrabooks, as Intel saw and predicted in 2011, I do think we'll see significant sales. In fact, probably about 80 to 90% of the Ultrabooks that will be sold in 2012 should sell in the last two months of this year. Now, that's if those can be shipped to the customers. Uh, I know some of the Ultrabooks won't even be here till December, so we also have to think about um, maybe that quarter going into January and February as well. But uh, it's definitely going to be a start of the interesting period for Ultrabooks when we get to CES in January. We'll start to hear more about Haswell as well. I hope we don't hear too much because that won't be happening uh, until later in 2013. That could slow the market down as well. But anyway, let me just show you now um, a couple of software apps that I've been working with with the uh, Ultrabook uh, Challenge, the Ultimate Coder Ultimate Challenge uh, with Intel. And uh, if you've got comments about uh, how the Ultrabook is developing, how any of those changes um, affect you, that's the operating system, the apps, and the hardware, and the pricing, put a comment in the YouTube video down below. Don't forget to like it if you've enjoyed this video. And uh, we'll be back for more at ultrabooknews.com. And on this video channel, my name's Chippy. Thanks for watching. So here we are. This is uh, Windows 8 uh, modern UI interface. Um, I've got a bunch of apps uh, installed here. Let me just take you through a few of these right now. So the first one I'm going to show you is just a very simple application which I think reflects the sort of usage of Windows 8 uh, user interface, Metro user interface. It's a very simple um, Evernote application. We have our um, notes. We can edit our notes with the built-in keyboard very easily. We can save those and we can search and we can synchronize those to Evernote server. Synchronize here and they will be available on all my other devices that have Evernote on them. So it's a fairly simple, straightforward application, but it works really well and it's very quick to do nice, quick updates on, on notes as, you're, yeah, as you think about them, basically. So here's uh, TuneIn Radio, it's uh, one of my favorite uh, radio apps on Android, and I'm pleased to see it on Windows 8 as well. It uses the location subsystem to show you your local radio stations, for example, uh, Eins Live here where I am in, uh, in Germany, um, but there's also um, a whole bunch of other stuff on there as well. Let's just turn that off, including we've got podcasts here, and we can go through and search various podcast, podcast genres here. Um, let's have a look at some um, news podcasts. Here we go. Um, for example, straight into those podcasts there. So that's a really useful app and, of course, um, a nice app for snacking and background usage as well. So one app I'm going to try and demo now which actually demonstrates the uh, multi-touch capabilities of the uh, touchscreen in this case. And also, I'm pleased to say it's a very responsive UI. So it's very physical. As you hit things, they actually work pretty well. So
that's a drums apps very basic but it just shows that the responsiveness is pretty good So here's an app you'll all uh, recognize from iPhone or Android. It's um, Fruit Ninja. So here's an app probably worth uh, mentioning, Metro Twit. Uh, it's a good demonstration of uh, multi-touch here. Now, actually, I would prefer the columns to be moving in um, vertical plane, sorry, horizontal plane rather than vertical. But it's a good uh, demo of an app. And if we go to uh, pictures now um, and we pick a picture, where is my pictures app? I've been moving stuff around on here a lot. Um, I've deleted that picture. Ah, there it is. Photos app. So let's um, let's just pick an image. Um, here we go. Here's something. And what we'll do is we'll just use the sharing sus subsystem here. We can go to Metro Twit, select the uh, image, write our text, and it will post. So that's a really nice example of how you can sort of share content between apps using the sharing sus subsystem there and metro twit a nice sorry this is who it is metro twit a nice demo of multi-touch multi-column usage so one more app which is working quite well on the ultrabook especially because of the processing platform we got here is power director mobile and uh, this is free actually with some versions of the new power director version 11 uh, but I think you can buy it for something like 12 euros in, in the store. It is basically a very simple way to put together videos. You select your content, you edit the sections you want to edit, you can trim the videos, you can do bits and pieces to those. And then basically you choose a style and uh, we can preview it, add a title, oops, select the style, preview it and do a title on that. And uh, well, obviously, we can do everything with the uh, keyboard here. And here you can see automatic background. And then go to the end. So, it's giving you an intro and outro and uh, various features there and then you can basically send that to YouTube, Facebook, save it as a local project or you can export it so you can import it into uh, Cyberlink 10. I think this is a really nice one that's going to be uh, very useful for a tablet because uh, it really means you don't have to use the keyboard at all and it's very quick and if you can create the style that you're looking for uh, then I think it's going to be really useful for people doing very quick uh, YouTube uploads even some um, given the right template some photo or video journalists 
will be will be interested in this because of the uh, the processing power in the Ultrabook platform really makes that uh, rendering very quick. That's PowerDirector Mobile. So that's a little demo of some of the apps that are uh, on the on this Ultrabook uh, right now. Of course, there's uh, there's more coming. If you take a look at the the store, there's stuff coming in every day now. Uh, and in fact, we're starting to see some brands. Norton is in there now. Cyberlink, as I told you before, uh, we've seen WordPress uh, and a few others. So I think uh, over the next few weeks, we're going to see stuff uh, accelerating in this in this marketplace. And as we go to the 25th of October, we'll probably see a whole ton of new apps. And I'll try and bring you some uh, reviews and basically some overviews of some of the most important stuff that's hitting um, the Ultrabook platform, for example. So we'll be looking at stuff which has uh, maybe got extra graphics, um, features that use sensors, touch, that sort of stuff, and some of the processing power of the platform as well. So that's an overview there of uh, some uh, Windows 8 apps. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to be bringing you more at ultrabooknews.com. My name's Chippy. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, please like the video. It helps us get the word out. Thanks for watching.